Picture the situation. We need to store, say, our current score, and lots of scripts will need to access this score. Tons of scripts having a reference to this would get very messy, so that's one problem. Secondly, what if we change the level? The don't destroy and load property allows us to make a game object not be destroyed when the scene changes. However, if we were to go to the scene where the object is first authored, say the main menu, then that object would be created again and placed in don't destroy and load, and we would have two of the same object. But why would it be bad if we had two of the same score object? Having multiple objects floating around carrying important data means you're going to lose track of which one is the most relevant one and which one is being referenced by objects. We can solve both of these issues with a singleton. This is an object where only one instance will ever exist and it is directly accessible from anywhere. To do so, we must first understand the difference between an instance property and a static property. If we have a class, say score counter, with the score variable, we can have multiple instances of that class and so each player object can have their own individual score. However, if score counter were to have a static variable, say top score, then each instance, if it were to change top score, would effectively change the top score variable for every other instance. This is because the top score static variable belongs to the class itself rather than an instance of the class. Okay, cool, but what's this got to do with what a singleton is? Well, remember how we don't want to have loads of references. With a class that has a static property, such as static top score, we can reference that static variable or method by doing score counter dot top score from anywhere in the project since those properties belong to the class, not an instance of the class. So what if we have an object, call it our game controller, and give it a script with the same name game controller? Inside the script, we will create a static variable of the game controller type named instance, where public get and private set. On awake, so when the object is first created, we're going to assign a reference to this game controller script instance in our static field. This means that when we do game controller instance, we will now be referencing to the instance without a hard reference pass. However, this can very clearly be dangerous if multiple instances are created, as that static reference to instance will be pointing to the newest created instance of the game controller class. So, we need to ensure that there is only ever one instance. To do this, on awake, we first check if the instance is null. If the instance is null, we set the instance to this instance. Otherwise, we destroy the game object this script is attached to, which we just created, since an instance of the singleton already exists elsewhere. We're also going to make the game object don't destroy and load if we successfully set the instance to ensure it stays all throughout our game. So let's look back at what we needed. A way to avoid lots of references. Yes, we can simply reference the name of the class and the static instance, no hard reference required. Will it stay in the scene if the scene changes? Yes, it's marked don't destroy and load. Will it be duplicated if we were to go back to the scene where the object is first created? No, it won't, since on awake it checks that the static instance variable is set and it will destroy the object that attempts to be recreated. What if we spawn another instance of Game Controller by accident? Well, the same happens. It will destroy the new version that we are trying to create, since one already exists. In summary, we now have a completely unique, persistent object that can be easily accessed without needing an explicit object reference. So how can we use it? So let's say we've got these coins that we want to collect. In the previous video, we made it so that the coins find a reference of Game Controller, then they subscribe Game Controller's increment score method to its coin collect event. However, we no longer need to do this. Since Game Controller is now a singleton, we can instead just access the Game Controller via the static instance rather than using GameObject.Find. So we're going to put the score variable onto the Game Controller, and as well as this, we're going to make the coin collect event on this Game Controller so that the coin collection can be handled centrally. We're then going to make a method called increment score, which we will subscribe to the coin collect event in awake so that the incrementation of the score is done when that event fires. On the coins themselves, we will invoke the game controller's coin collect event by doing gamecontroller.instance.coincollect.invoke when we collide with the player. As well as this, we can easily hook things such as a UI into this easily accessible coin collect event. This decreases coupling as opposed to calling a UI update from within the game controller or coins, because let's say we delete the UI, the score will still increment and we won't be getting a null reference exception to the UI. As you see now, when we collect coins, the score changes. If we were to switch scenes, the game controller is still there. And when we collect coins, the UI on this scene also easily hooks into the game controller and displays a score. In conclusion, you can see now we've got an easily accessible central point handling our coin collection into which other modules can hook into. And this is basically what a singleton is and an example of how we could use it. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped.